Today we're at Vopli to see a flashy new feature of our Steam Illumination service. Welcome to Inverly. Starting off here in the carriage works and our bullied coach, which we've been following. Last time we were in the wood workshop, machining a couple hundred bits of wood to go on part of the roof. Now these essentially slot into the metal bars, which are the roof hoops, line them all up, and that's what you attach your roof to. You can see the light boxes have been fitted as well, and all of them fit into these. These are the headers. They slot into the top of the coach framework, and essentially, if these don't fit properly, nothing else will fit properly, roof just won't go on, won't fit together, bad times. These need replacing as uh, everything gets uh, worn, rotten over time. However, there is a bit of a challenge. In its simplest terms, they slot into the top of the coach. However, it's never really quite that simple. The profile is anything but square. Everything has a nice distinct curve to match with the roof line and each little slot is at its own particular angle. Now the guys here have been working on planing downward and have a very detailed plan of how they're going to get that profile matched exactly through cutting and manipulating the wood to ensure everything fits. They'll then fit it in situ, fit the hoops up, drill those in situ so those all fit, add the roof boards on and yes, just another little element to get this coach back and running again. Although on a personal note, I would say it'd be fantastic to take this out as a convertible, see it running down the avenue of trees as the sun shines freely into the coach, but structurally, I cannot stress how much of a bad idea that would be, understandably. And that's before you consider it raining. Not ideal. Hmm. Elsewhere in the carriage works, one of the coaches are in for work on its corridor connection. Essentially, there's two pins here that push against the edge of the corridor plate and essentially ensure that the plates stay together between the two coaches acting as a buffer so there's no gap for anyone to fall through and also stays watertight. Understandably, these are exposed to the elements to an extent are constantly moving around so they can seize, which is why they've been taken off to clean up and get this coach back up and running again. Over here in the boiler shop, Canadian Pacific smoke box door has been test fitted. There's still a minor bit of fettling work to do, including drilling holes for the rivets, which the hinges will attach to. Once that's done, we can then take away these temporary bits, which are currently holding the door on. Looking at the boiler, they've started tubing it, so they're currently fitting them in. They'll then need to be expanded to create that nice steam and watertight seal. Up here is where the main steam pipe goes. It's currently out on the floor. We're currently waiting for a new end to go on it. Once that's in, that will also be going in. So this takes essentially your steam from where it's harvested from the regulator down through the superheater, superheats that steam, and then takes it down into the pistons to give you that power. Further down the boiler at the top of the firebox, they're currently knocking over the crown stays that will come in, and the next batch have already arrived as well. So they'll be going in shortly. Over here in Rockley MPD on our standard 475079, they're currently doing some horn grinding. Now these are eventually where the axle boxes will sit, so needless to say, they need to be square. The datum is taken from the main cylinder, and that goes to the centre driving axle. From there, you then take your datum for your front and rear drivers, and you can work out essentially making everything square, so the engine will work together instead of essentially shaking itself to bits. Needless to say, it's a precise but laborious job. Now looking at the wheels themselves for the 75, you can see uh, Mick has finished his paint job, they've got the return cranks fitted and the coupling rod, the bushes on the inside there being white metal which attach onto here and give the locomotive its drive and transfer the power from the cylinders all the way down through the wheels. Looking at our little tank engine, on the interior motion they've currently got one of the eccentric straps fitted, they're going to fit some more and these form part of the valve timing and ultimately the drive system for our little blue engine. On the exterior they're currently starting the paint job, so this is some of the undercoat which is really tempting, but I know I shouldn't touch it. Since we're on the line of paint jobs, our little blue engines, tanks, cab roof and splashes have all been brought into the paint shop, where they'll be cleaned down, painted up, ready to go back on the locomotive. Now looking at our running fleet, Goliath 506 and the Ivan have all been stopped this month for a washout, albeit at different times, where they drain the border down, clean it out of all the sludge and sediment you get, a bit like you, what you find in the bottom of your kettle, but understandably a little bit more extreme. 
They've also done some work on Goliath's blower and ejector. Now these essentially, the blower draws the air through the fire and out the chimney to stop it coming out in the cabin saying hello to you, and the ejector is what pulls off the brakes. These are a collection of cones and pipework which eventually get worn over time, so they occasionally they need to be replaced. So they took the opportunity while Goliath was stopped to do just that. Some big news up here in Rockley Top Yard with our standard four tank 80150. It was moved up here last week to make some space down at Allsford and also to allow the volunteers easy access so they can work on it. Now I should probably state this because I know forums have already been going mad about the news. We're not going to see this in Rockley MPD being overhauled next week. This is here to give the volunteers easier access to free up some space and if you would like to find out more about the work that's going on then do visit their group. The link you need is on the screen. Now looking ahead we've got a lot to look forward to. Looking at our autumn steam gala we've already got a fantastic liner with our own locomotives Goliath visiting. Two visitors already announced LNWR coal tank number 1054 courtesy of Bahamas Locomotive Trust and Fenchurch for our friends at the Bluebell Railway. At the time of filming there is still one more visitor to be announced so do pop online at watercrestline.co.uk for more information. Aside from the Autumn Steam Gala, in a few weeks time we've got our Antiques Valuation Roadshow down at Allsford, our Open Weekend and much more. So again, do visit watercrestline.co.uk for more information. Well, a lot's happening here at the Watercrest Line as always and plenty to look forward to in the future. Now, it may be the uh, middle of August, but in the same way the soaps film Christmas specials around this time of year, we're getting ready for our very own Christmas special. We're testing out some brand new features of our steam illuminations trains. So without further ado, let's have a look inside. Welcome to our brand new interior and our canopy of lights. Now, if you have been on steam illuminations in previous years, you know the outside is amazing and the inside is just something else. It's fantastic. We're here today to test out some new lights and testing out with our volunteers who will be arriving when it gets a little bit darker. So let's turn down the outside lights, let the party fly and also find out a little bit more about this train from its creative director, brains behind it all, well all of the above, our very talented volunteer Simon. So it's 10 p.m. in the middle of August, and here I am back on a Mark One coach having just been listening to Christmas music. Yes, you heard it. The reason being, we are here to test our new canopy of lights for Steam Illuminations 2023. We dragged on a load of volunteers and friends and family to come and experience our new light show. Right, we're gonna get back to some more interaction, so uh, lots of loud voices again for this. <laughs> For me, it's always been important that the inside is where the real magic happens, as that, at the end of the day, is where our paying customers are. So we've bumped up the lights inside, we've doubled the amount of lights, they're brighter, they're more impressive, and obviously they don't just sit here doing this. As before, every single one of these LEDs we have full control over, any colour we want, we can suit effects up and down, but now we've doubled the amount, we've made them brighter and bigger, so the effect is far more impressive and immersive for all the passengers on board. So one of the great things about this and bringing everyone down here is actually seeing how people reacted to the light show to make sure we're getting it right. And a personal favorite of mine was getting people to pose for the YMCA. And we took our time over that. They thought we were just taking photographs, but we might have been filming them as well. So guys, there is so much to look forward to on board Steam Illuminations this year. I am personally really excited. I mean, I've listened to Christmas music on this so many times now, but having just done that, I can't wait to get back to it. So guys, please do get onto the website, watercrestline.co.uk, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and share.